tonight, to tonight. Oh, yuck, tonight. <laughs> the temperatures are gonna drop to 13 degrees Celsius. Yuck, 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 yuck. Not just for me, but also yuck for my Phalaenopsis out here that have been glam camping. Oof, maybe, what, since mid-September? I don't know. They've been doing really well. They've been getting a lot of calcium and magnesium soaks. I've backed off on the seaweed a long time ago. I don't want any hormones raging <laughs> in Phalaenopsis orchids that now will have to deal with much lower light levels and temperatures that are declining. The days are still pretty. Well, warm, let's just say, if you stay in the sun, not necessarily in the shade, you can feel a little bit of a chill, but yeah, the night. Okay, so I only have one night coming up that is going to be 13 degrees Celsius, and then we're back up again for a little bit to about 15, 16 degrees Celsius. But these are not the orchids I'm gonna be schlepping in and out. Tonight is the night that their glam camping session is over, and they will be going inside, and that is where they're going to stay. So all I'm doing now is just giving them another light, little bit of a clean of the leaves, of the residue, you know, a little bit more dust has settled on them, even though on the odd occasions I've been going around keeping them clean. But this is not gonna be the norm for me during the winter. I'm far too busy with doing everything else that, uh, yeah, cleaning Phalaenopsis leaves is not, <laughs> Not exactly a pastime that I will be having much time for. Also, the tight squeeze, the space, everything is a little bit congested in that grow space, or whatever you want to call it, dining room, that I can't remove these from their shelf as often as I would like, so they pretty much stay in their location. And it's just a question of, you know, gently lifting up the pot. How heavy are you? Nope, you need some water, and then you know, filling in water. I don't even take them down to soak. So all their goodies and spa treatment now comes to an end. And if we haven't done our work properly leading up to now, then it's too late now to start and try to correct it and do better. I've got a lot of them spiking, which is amazing. And I found a couple more spikes on some mini fowls. We'll have to wait and see if I let them bloom out, but for the time being, they are, for the most part, all spiking. Even my little mini mark here is extending a spike. Seems to be settling nicely into that pot, I can say that much. Even my funky little Dorytheonopsis, Asconopsis, Irene Dobkin, Elmhurst, that I've always been struggling with because, you know, roots on these guys are far and few in between. Also had a little bit of a, hmm, the thrips were interested for a little while. And then I got a grip on those. So she's come along nicely while she was outside. So all of this is now going to go inside. And have I even said hello? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, my apologies. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So I'm going to be moving them indoors and then I'll show you what I'm thinking and why they are where they are. A few hours later. Right, this is the status quo for the time being, with the exception of the top shelf of bigger Phalaenopsis orchids that just stay up there, and my Schilleriana that is also perched over closer to the window because I want to train that spike. Pretty much they're all placed so that the spikes can go over to the left towards the light. However, some of my divas here will consider that the white wall behind them is the brighter light source and the spikes may head over in that direction. Whatever happens, I understand white can be much more reflective than what I consider natural brighter light, especially with what we're going to be up against. But the top shelf is pretty much established so that when I move them, if I move them, it is only just to add water. There won't be much dusting going on. The lower shelf, I have a few more little mini fowls that are just tucked away behind the Gratrixianum, but they are very close to the natural light by the open terrace door. And for the time being, some of the other ones are also on the even lower shelf. There is still shade in that area. I have to be very careful with the orchids that I have placed right by the terrace door 
they can take a lot more light because the sunlight is already filling those shelves during some parts of the day. And because the temperatures are still agreeable, the fact that we're inside makes it even hotter. So direct sun, no airflow, even though the nights have cooled down. Yeah, I gotta be careful with what I put there. So, you know, the Jamelia is pretty much there to protect the little Tolumnias in the back behind it and so on and so forth. Jomelia hasn't seen any direct sun for several months, with the exception of just bright, bright shade, but you never know how these things go. So now I'm going to be monitoring indoors and outdoors for the time being, because not everybody's coming inside tonight. For one night of 13 degrees Celsius, I'm not going to bring everybody in, especially if the next week it's still going to be around 15 to 16 degrees. So it's just this one night, but the fowls, they would take a hit. As well as, let's have a look over here. Yes, I know, it's going to look darker and darker. However, for the time being, this is what you got. Sorry, let me see if I do switch the light on, if it makes any difference. Yeah, little bit of difference, we can work with that. So you see that for the time being, I have some of the bigger fowls onto the left side of this rack and they're scooched all the way towards us, which is furthest away from the light source because the afternoon sun is already coming in and it would burn them. So I'm very careful. I may need to do some indoor shuffling during the days as this happens, because normally these big fowls live on the shelf, sorry for the jiggle, right here. But for the time being, that shelf is empty, so that's where they're gonna live. And of course, nothing is straight anymore once you do one thing and move to the other, but I, you get my point. So on the lower shelf, I have brought in all the slipper orchids. And for the time being, that is where they're going to live. Normally, they live on the lower shelf right down there because the afternoon sun, as you can see with the summer bloomers, some of the afternoon sun is starting to fade away in this case. But usually when we're really into the depth of winter, if there is sun, there's a little bit of residual light right on the lower shelf and that's where all the slipper orchids will live in the future. For now, they can be parked where they are, but you see, I need the height space of that shelf for future reference. These little short, stout little plants, they will be taking up very, very prime real estate. Hasta ahora, this is okay. And just a little sneak over here. All my summer bloomers would normally be lined up in a row underneath this lower shelf where they should be getting light, but they're not going to be getting light with the exception of if the weather permits. And this is now, what time have we got now? Let me check. It is now 3.30 p.m. But you see this sun, although directly on their leaves, is super, super weak and it doesn't last for very long. So I have no concerns about my summer bloomers getting burnt there. On the contrary, <laughs> I'm so glad when there is light. So normally I quetch them all in there. But those are details that will come into effect even more once the other ones come in. That is not going to be the case for now. For now, we are where we are with who has come inside. And I hope that from here on in, we'll be seeing some spikes happen and eventually some blooms. Now, again, I'm not gonna let everybody bloom out. Just an FYI, even though I've got plenty of spikes. But now is not the time to be cutting spikes. Now is the time just to let them do that, let them get their hormones out of their system, and then we will decide, probably around January, who's going to bloom and who's not. So thank you very much for keeping me focused. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Everybody else tonight is going to be tucked into corners that have pockets of warmth just so that they can enjoy the 13 degrees. Dawiana is coming in. <laughs> oh, yes. Dawiana is coming in. There was one night that got down to 15 or something like that and the next morning the leaves were starting to curl and I'm like, for real? Yeah, so we have some cold damage or let's say a little bit of cold influence on the leaves of our Cattleya Dawiana. So she has been coming in every single night, including the Tolumnias. They have come in and sat on their trays for the nights and yeah, so bit by bit the more fussy ones are already being moved in. But on days like these, She's been outside. The mini shuffle has begun. I am, however, happy to get all my complex fowls in. That takes a mother load off. Now it's just a question who needs it most and who can tolerate it. And bit by bit, everybody will be parked in here. We will button down the hatches. <laughs> Again, 
Thank you for watching. Appreciate your time. Hope this was of a little bit of an interest. And hey, you know this. This is importante for YouTube. So please, please like the video. I appreciate your support. Have yourselves a fabulous, fabulous day. One condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.